Versailles in the late 1700s is an oasis of extravagance, surrounded by a land in despair. And with an uncertain king at the helm, France is charting a course for disaster. After 19 years of marriage, Louis has sired four children. Yet as a king, he remains impotent. In an attempt to demonstrate leadership, Louis dabbles in financial reforms. But his misguided interfering burdens the poor with heavy taxes, while the nobility pay hardly at all. With the economy in shambles, the banks force Louis to hire a finance minister, Jacques Necker. An enlightened thinker, Necker is popular with the people in a way that Louis can only envy. Necker urges Louis to call a meeting of the traditional representative body of the kingdom, the Estates General. It is the first time the representatives have been called together in 175 years. France was politically organized in something called the Estates. The first estate was the clergy, the second estate was the nobility, and the third estate was everyone else. May 4th, 1789. A skilled young lawyer and politician arrives at Versailles. Maximilien Robespierre comes to stand before the Estates General as a deputy to fight for a fair voice for the people he represents, the third estate. At the Estates General, Robespierre and his colleagues are demanding that the nobility and clergy pay taxes, but Louis feels increasingly threatened by the growing radicalism of the third estate. Then, on June 20th, after a six-week deadlock, the deputies arrive to find that they are being silenced. The deputies declare themselves a new national assembly, the true representatives of the people of France. In one revolutionary stand of defiance, the National Assembly is born. To defend themselves, the people form a new National Guard. Rioters raid Paris's armories and make away with over 28,000 muskets. The only thing missing is gunpowder, and the people know just where to get it. In the center of Paris, there looms a massive stone dungeon notorious as a symbol of feudal rule, the Bastille. The prison houses the city's stores of gunpowder and is legendary as a den of torture and unspeakable deaths. On July 14th, crowds band together identifying themselves with a small cockade, red and blue for the colors of Paris, separated by white, the color of the House of Bourbon. The tricolor is born. From the feverish crowd, a voice cries out to the Bastille. With the smoke still clearing, Louis XVI returns from a hunting trip. An aide interrupts and breaks the news of the riots and the fall of the Bastille. Louis XVI asks, is it a revolt? No, sire, he replies, it is a revolution. <laughs> 